My AI software business is now making 20K US dollars per month. Just three months ago, this business did not even exist yet. In this video, I'll review the exact 15 tools that I've been using to grow my software business from zero to 20K US dollars per month. Whether you're an aspiring entrepreneur who wants to start building a software business or a startup founder who wants to find better tools to scale their business, these are the exact tools I wish I'd known from day one. By the way, none of these tools are sponsored tools. I'm not being paid to promote them. I also won't put any affiliate links. I just really like using these tools in my business and I just want to share my experience. To keep it simple, I'm going to break this video down into three sections based on the tools and the functions that they do in my business. And for context, my business is called copycoder.ai. We essentially help AI builders build their app faster. So you can take a screenshot of any app that you want to recreate and then drag it into copy coder. We generate some optimized prompts for you and you can then use those prompts to build your app much faster. So here's how we're going to break down the tools in this video. Number one, we're going to start with the development stack tools. So these are all of the tools that we use actually to build the product. Then we're going to go into the operations tools. And these are the tools that we use to run the business. And third are the marketing tools, which are all of the tools that I use for marketing this product. For example, creating content like this video that you're watching right now. Okay, that's a breakdown. Let's get started. Let's start with the development tools. And these are all of the tools that we use to build copy coder. And for context, I don't actually know how to code. Whenever I code something, I just build it completely with AI. My business partner in Copy Coder does have a bit of a coding experience, but at the end of the day, around 80 to 90% of all of the code in our code base is written by AI. So all of these tools that I'm going to list here can be used by beginners who have absolutely no idea how to write code. The first tool is Cursor. Cursor is the AI code editor that we use. There are obviously a lot of other AI code editors out there now, but I still find that Cursor produces the best quality of code and that's why it's been my number one choice. Their recent agent feature that they release is really good. It understands the context really well, so I use that a lot. And once you start to develop a bit more complex things, then you can use the AI chat and be more precise with your context. But all of these tools within Cursor are getting better and better. And the team is actually also really good at implementing the newer models into the product really quickly. For our front end frameworks, we are using Next.js and ChatCN. Now, technically these aren't tools, they're more like frameworks and libraries, but I thought it would be good to mention them in here as well. For those that don't know what this is, you can think of this kind of as a template. So Next.js is kind of like the skeleton for your app and ChatCN are like UI components that you can add into your app so that you don't have to rebuild everything from scratch. And currently Next.js and ChatCN are probably the most common frameworks for building web applications. And this of course is different if you're building something else than a web application like a mobile app or a desktop app or an extension. For our backend, we use Superbase. It's very easy to use. It's quite cheap. It scales with the amount of users that you have. There are definitely cheaper options out there, but I think it's usually not worth the hassle because in the beginning, you kind of just want to build fast. Superbase is pretty easy to integrate into your project. I have a couple of tutorials about this on this channel as well. And what's cool is that they also have built in user authentication. So you can easily integrate, for example, a Google sign in functionality into your app. For the AI features in our app, we mostly use the Anthropic API. In our testing, we found that the Anthropic models usually give us the best results. So we just kind of stuck with that. We recently also started using Grok with a Q to integrate uh, the models just because it's faster. So it just basically allows you to get faster responses from the API. For deploying our app, so basically putting it live and getting a URL, we are using Replit right now. You can pretty easily transfer your code that you've built in Cursor over to Replit and Replit makes this deployment process pretty easy. We are thinking about just switching to Vercel in our next release. Honestly, there's no big difference between Vercel or Replit. Both of these are good options. So go with either one. And for the payments, we are currently using Stripe. So the thing with Stripe is it's kind of a monopoly, unfortunately. So there aren't many other options. Usually software businesses just use Stripe, but to be honest, the API and also the support is a bit of a nightmare. I'm really hoping that there are better options in the future, but right now we kind of don't have another choice. There are other merchant of record solutions like Lemon Squeezy or Paddle or Polar, which are basically built on top of Stripe 
but they usually charge an additional around 3% fee, which can get quite a lot uh, once you scale. Okay, now let's move on to the operations tools, which are all of the tools that we use to basically run the business. First up is Notion. I'm a huge Notion fan and addict. I use Notion for pretty much everything. I use it to organize my tasks, to plan, to coordinate. I also use it for all of my writing. So whenever I'm writing something, my draft is always in Notion first. And some people say Notion decreases your productivity, but I actually think it's the opposite. So for me, it's really increasing my productivity. And it's probably one of those tools that I couldn't live without and I, I wouldn't know what I would do without it. Next up is Loops and I've become a huge fan of this product. We use Loops to send out all of our emails for a copy coder. So for example, when a user signs up, we send them a sign-in confirmation email. We also send an onboarding sequence after the user has signed up to basically convert them to paid. And we sometimes also send out update emails, for example, when we do a new release. And for all of that, we use Loops. And the awesome thing is that Loops is really specialized on making sure that your email doesn't land in spam. And we actually had this problem when we were using Mailgun in the beginning that our emails were landing in spam more and more. And as soon as we switched to Loops, this stopped happening. Apart from that, the user interface is just really clean and very easy to use. So I've become a big fan of this product. To manage our affiliate program, we use Tolt. So people that want to promote Copy Coder and basically create content about it, and then share some of the revenue that we're making can sign up to our affiliate program and basically get a referral link. And to manage that, we use a tool called Tolt. There are a couple of different alternatives for this. One of the very popular ones is Rewardful, but Tolt seemed like a up and coming tool that's good for startups. And it has a couple of really cool features as well, like auto payouts and the ability to manage custom affiliate percentages. So we ended up on that tool. Next up is Loom. Loom is another one of those tools like Notion. If it wouldn't exist, my business probably wouldn't be the same. I can't even begin to describe how much time it is saving me. So just being able to record something really quickly on my screen and then sending it off is, is saving me so much time. I use it, for example, to record quick process descriptions and then send it off to my assistant or I'll also use it for testing and basically record the entire testing experience and share that with my partner. And I actually often also use Loom for recordings like this that I can then use to edit later. And for our last operational tool, we have Discord. We use Discord basically to chat about everything and to keep each other in the loop. A lot of people like using Slack for this, but I feel like Slack is so professional and Discord just feels a bit more fun. And I think it's really important to have fun while you're building your business. Okay, and now for the last section, we're going to move on to the marketing tools. So these are all of the tools tools that help me market the product, which for us is mainly creating content like the video that you're watching right now. So all of these tools help me create content. First up are the general purpose LLMs that I use. For most of my tasks, I actually use Claude. I know that there are many different benchmarks now and many LLMs have come out since Claude topped that list, but benchmarks are one thing and the actual usage and the experience is something else. And I just have the experience that whenever I use Claude, I usually get the best results, whether that's for analyzing data, whether that's for brainstorming or writing. So I kind of just stuck with Claude. Sometimes I'll also use ChatGPT just because I really like the desktop app. So the desktop app has this keyboard shortcut that you can call it and just enter some question that I have really quickly. And I'll use that if I just want to ask a simple question or if I want to use the web search feature, which Claude doesn't have yet, unfortunately. If I want to do quick screen recordings, I'll use a tool called Screen Studio. The big benefit of this is that it creates these like really cool professional looking zoom effects. And that just makes your screen recording look really nice. And the editor itself is overall just really easy to use. So if you want to record something quickly, that's I think the best tool to use right now. Usually I use it for videos where I'm kind of just doing a very quick tutorial or some kind of demo of sorts, but not for very long, highly produced videos. When I want to create more professional videos that are edited, I'll use Descript or Filmora. I usually use Descript to do the raw edits because Descript has this cool feature that it automatically transcribes your entire video. And then you can edit your video just by editing the transcript and that actually makes it really fast. It also has pretty good AI features. So you can just tell the AI to remove all of the obvious cuts and you know remove like the white space for example and the AI will go ahead and do that. And for my other videos and for my shorts I usually record them and then I will send them off to my editor and my editor uses a tool called Filmora to make these like a bit more professional 
editing cuts and effects and uh, other transitions and so on. And finally, there's Canva for any type of image editing. For example, when I do a YouTube thumbnail or I'm creating an image for a social media post, I will use Canva. It's really good for people that are not professional designers and it's just very easy to use and you can create pretty good looking images very quickly. All right, so these are the 15 tools that I use in my business and without these, my business would probably not be where it is right now. And if you found this helpful and if you want to build your own software business, I have a community called the Prompt Warrior Community. Inside, I personally help you find product ideas, build your products with AI and grow your product to reach 3K per month. I'll put the link below if you wanna come check us out. Thanks so much for watching this video. In my next video, I plan to do a deep dive on all of the strategies that have actually helped us grow CopyCoder to 20K per month. So see you in the next video.